now that we have set up the notation for our two by ANOVA with multiple observations for each combo of A and B, we can actually get into some of the statistical properties. All right, so just like in all our previous ANOVA situations, the total sum of squares divided by sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. But what is n? n is a times b times c. So SS total over sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with a times b times c minus 1 degrees of freedom. All right, so if we use our same line of reasoning as in our previous ANOVAs, then we know that SS a over sigma squared, SS b over sigma squared, SS a b over sigma squared, and SS e over sigma squared are all independent, and we're going to see that each one of these has a chi-squared distribution. All right, so SS a over sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with a minus one degrees of freedom as long as our null hypothesis for a is true. In other words, as long as the means among a's different levels are all equal, then SS a over sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with a minus one degrees of freedom. Similarly, when the means amongst b's different levels are all equal, then SSB over sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with b minus 1 degrees of freedom. Similarly, when the means amongst all combos of A and B are equal, in other words, when there's no interaction term, then SSAB over sigma squared has a chi-squared distribution with A minus 1 times B minus 1 degrees of freedom. All right, so if we have chi-squared equals chi-squared plus chi-squared plus chi-squared plus something, then we know that that last thingy has to be a chi-squared random variable as well. So that's exactly what we have going on, just like we've been seeing all along. So SSE over sigma squared must be a chi-squared random variable. And to find its degrees of freedom, we would just use the fact that degrees of freedom add. So we know that A minus 1 plus B minus 1 plus a minus 1 times b minus 1 plus whatever the degrees of freedom are for SSE over sigma squared must equal n minus 1, which is a times b times c minus 1. So if we just do a little bit of arithmetic, we can find that the degrees of freedom for SSE over sigma squared is a times b times c minus 1. All right, so now we have all those chi-squared random variables set up. We can now do some of our test stats. So say that we want to test whether there is an interaction term. So we're trying to figure out, is there some combo of detergent and water temperature that will more effectively or less effectively remove dirt from clothing? So we're going to use this test statistic here. We're going to look at the variability among the different interaction terms. So we're looking at SSAB. And we're comparing it to the variability within the interactions. In other words, we're looking at the variability due to error, so the variability um, amongst all our different runs of the same type of detergent and the same temperature of water. So our test stat is, we can call it FAB, the sum of squares for AB divided by the degrees of freedom, which is A minus 1 times B minus 1. And then in the denominator, we have SSE divided by A times B times C minus 1. All right, so that's our test statistic. We know that the numerator is a chi-squared, the denominator is a chi-squared, and they're independent. Therefore, this test statistic must be an F random variable. And its degrees of freedom are, this is the first degree to degrees of freedom, and this is the second degrees of freedom. So it's an F with A minus 1 times B minus 1 degrees of freedom for the first degrees of freedom, and the second degrees of freedom is a times b times c minus 1. All right, so this test stat has this f distribution under the null hypothesis. So as long as, in reality, there's no interaction term, then this will be true. So in other words, as long as actually there's no combo of water temperature and detergent that does better or worse than the other ones, then this distribution this uh, test stat has this sampling distribution here. All right, so then we can find our p-value by looking at, as always, our right tail. So here's our f distribution with a minus 1 times b minus 1 
degrees of freedom for the first degrees of freedom, and then A times B times C minus 1 for the second degrees of freedom. We mark off our test stat here, FAB, and we look at the area to the right, and that is our p-value. So if we have a small p-value, then we can say, actually, there must be some interaction that has a different mean than the others. In other words, there's some combo of detergent and water temperature that more effectively or less effectively removes dirt from clothing. And if our p-value is too big, then we would say there is no combo of water temperature and detergent that more or less effectively removes dirt from clothing. All right, so that's how we would test our interaction term. Now let's talk about these main effects. So I'll show you just for A, but B is the exact same story. Um, so to test whether any of A's levels have a different mean, we're going to use this test statistic here. So again, we're going to look at the variability amongst A's different levels and compare it to the um, variability within groups. Okay, so we have SSA divided by number of levels in A minus 1 in the numerator, and then our denominator is SSE divided by A times B times C minus 1. All right, so that's our test statistic. If all the means for the levels of A are actually equal, then that test statistic will have an F distribution with A minus 1 times A times B times C minus 1 degrees of freedom. And our p-value again, we're going to draw out our F distribution, mark off our test stat, and the p-value is the area to the right. So our p-value is a probability that an F distribution with A minus 1 and A times B times C minus 1 degrees of freedom is greater than our test statistic. And then finally, a good thing to know, again, would be an unbiased estimator for sigma squared. So that's going to be similar to all the previous ANOVAs that we've looked at, SSE divided by A times B times quantity C minus 1. All right, so that wraps up all the ANOVA stuff. It will be very useful to um, look at the ANOVA tables in the book just to help you kind of organize everything um, as you're preparing to work on this in class.